I've, I've been preparing for what's happening now for over 10 years now, and I'm still a little bit surprised at the pace that it's happened just in the last few weeks, specifically in the commodities. I mean, we've ex we've all been expecting inflation, but I mean, we're, we're things are doubling <laughs> every week or so. Just last week, coal was up 75% in a week. Uh, we all saw what nickel did the last couple of days, you know, up, uh, you know, 100 per plus percent in two days for nickel. And it's this is happening across the board, and this is going to have long lasting impacts, even if the uh, crisis in Ukraine and Eastern Europe starts to ease, the, the impacts of what's happening right now are, this isn't a flash in the pan. This is a trend that's going to accelerate into the remainder of the decade with you know crazy volatility along the way. And as Rick Rule likes to say, you're either, you either take it, use volatility to your advantage or you're a victim of it. And you know we, we specialize in using it to our advantage. I was just talking to Mike Connor and he reminded me of I mean, I wasn't there in the 70s, but he reminded me of some old conversations with Rick where Rick was talking about the, the legendary commodities market that made a lot of these great investors very wealthy and kind of branded their career. And he was talking about how first gold, or I'm sorry, first oil really moved. And mm -hmm. then everything just moves right after that. Um, what's your thoughts on that? And where do you think we are in this cycle? Yeah, 100 percent. The required industrial commodities typically move first, and we're seeing that. We saw uh, copper at all time highs, oil, um, things like that. Industrial metals. The monetary metals tend to lag a little bit because, the, you know, whether you believe in manipulation or not, they are suppressed, and so they tend to lag. But then they play rapid catch up, and especially silver. You know, we're seeing gold right near its all time highs. Silver is nowhere near its all time high, still less than half or right about half its all time high. So at some point, we're going to see a rapid catch up move. Now, whether that happens, you know, in the next few weeks or sometime this year or even into next year remains to be seen. But the key is being positioned ahead of time with core positions so that you're ready for when it happens and you're not a victim. So let's take a look at a chart for gold here. This chart goes back to the beginning of 2019, and we've remained above this uptrend line the whole time. So we've been in an uptrend in gold, despite how it has felt for the last year and a half or so. But you can see this downtrend line right here, going back to uh, late August of 2020. Once we broke above that, which just happened last a uh, couple weeks ago, the, the next thing to look for is higher highs. That's what any technical analyst is going to look for. So we broke above 1880, we broke above 1920, and now 1960. So we've moved really far, really fast. So I think at this point, it's undeniable that the trend has changed in gold. We're now in an uptrend. And that doesn't mean we're going to go straight up from here. So people need to understand how uptrends work. It, it doesn't go keep going straight. There's, uh, you see some of the biggest downside volatility in a bull market. So we need to be prepared for that and not shaken loose. And that's where having a solid understanding of the fundamentals really allows you to hold through that downside volatility. Now, we could fall all the way back to, towards $1,800. I'm not expecting that, but we could, and that would still be an uptrend in gold. So don't be surprised if we do see sharp pullbacks along the way, as long as we maintain higher highs and higher lows. That's what we're looking for going forward. And obviously, you can see right here, $2,089. That's the previous all-time high. The high today came within $11 of that. So I wouldn't be surprised at all if we go break above that in, the sh in short order here. But like I said, nothing goes straight up. So we're going to see downside volatility along the way. Yeah, so th that's a common, I think, misconception right here in the last few weeks is people say, oh, gold is rallying because of the geopol geopolitical situation in Ukraine. That may be partially true, but I've been watch I, I sit at my computer almost all day watching this stuff. And gold had turned the corner and it began moving up before Ukraine was in the headlines. And let's not forget, we are expecting the Fed to do their first nominal rate hike on March 16th. And typically what happens is gold rallies right after that first rate hike, at the beginning of a rate hike cycle. Well, once once something happens enough times in a row, the market begins to anticipate it. So I think this time the metals were anticipating a rally following that rate hike. So it happened beforehand this time. And then, of course, the geopolitical situation just added fuel to that. So there is a war premium that's built in right now. And if tensions de-escalate in the next few weeks, we could probably see some of that come out. But that doesn't mean that this is all based on what's going on in Ukraine and Russia right now. I, I do, I'm firmly convinced that we're going to see higher highs and higher lows going forward. Let's take a uh, look at the chart for silver, because what's really interesting here is whenever gold makes a new all-time high, silver always follows suit. So last or in 2020, 
Gold made a new all-time high, right? Went up to $2,089. Well, silver never made a new all-time high above 50. That has yet to happen yet. And I, I think it's all but certain to happen at some point in the not too distant future. And you know that could that can mean a few quarters. Um, it doesn't have to mean days or weeks, but it's coming. I'm very convinced of that. So when we look at the chart for silver here, you see I call it the silver squeeze downtrend channel because that began on February 1st, 2021, at the uh, you know the big silver squeeze movement, which was, you know, if anyone denies manipulation, you know that was probably the most obscene manipulation I've ever seen. You know, you have a day where you have all time record physical demand and then the price falls when supply is stagnant. So it defied the laws of supply and demand. And that started this downtrend line. Well, last week we broke above that downtrend channel. It's very clear here for the first time. And that makes $30 the initial price target. We're not quite there yet, but I think um, once silver gets above 30, you know, the, the path from 30 to 50 probably happens faster than most people think. Now, it's, a tall, it's going to be a tall order getting through $30. We might go up there and tap it, pull back quite a bit, you know, consolidate for a few weeks, and then get back above it. But getting above 30 this year, I, I think, is the main objective. And then once we get through 30 $50, there's not much technical resistance between 30 and 50 And if, if you're into the mining stocks, there's a lot of money to be made in silver miners between $25 silver and $50 silver. Why? Well, there's just so much leverage built into the mining stocks. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. Like, let's just, let's use a theoretical example that's not too, that's probably pretty accurate for the most part, speaking generally. Let's say you've got a producing mining company that uh, it costs them all, they're all in sustaining costs. Let's just say it's for easy math, $20 an ounce to pull an ounce of silver out of the ground and silver's at 25 for easy math. That means they make a $5 profit, right? On, on their, for every ounce they extract. Well, if silver goes from 25 to 30, that's a 20% rise in the price of silver, but their, their operating margins, their, their profit just doubled, even though the price of silver went up 20%. So you, that a little illustration right there illustrates the leverage in, in mining stocks. So if we go to $50 silver, these things are gonna be making hand, money hand over fist and the, the share price is gonna reflect that. All right, you got any other charts for us? Well, I've, I've got a lot of charts, but I, I think these ones kind of show where we're at. I, why don't I show one more for a GDX? This is the senior gold mining ETF, which is also characteristic of a, the start of a major, major uptrend, a major up leg. Typically what happens is gold leads followed by the senior gold miners, because that's where big money institutions go. And then the retail typically tends to follow suit. And the more speculative aspects of the sector tend to follow suit and play rapid catch up. So that means the junior silver miner is silver. So we're starting to see that. Um, but it's the senior gold miners that have been leading. So here, here's a chart for GDX. And you can see how fast we've run from down here around $28 up to over $40 today. So that's a really wow. nice move in just a short period of time. So you can see this is almost a vertical move. Moves like that don't just keep going on that trajectory. So this, this can allow you to plan for it. And I just sent out an, an alert to our premium members today, giving three strategies to consider right here, right now. And I, I took some action myself, but don't expect it to keep going up on this trajectory. There's gonna be downside volatility and you can use technicals or charts like this to pinpoint precision entries and exits for your mining stocks. And uh, you know, a lot of people are still looking to accumulate. I, I think that we're going to see some nice pullbacks along the way to much higher prices. I, whenever people talk about the fundamentals for silver, even uranium and platinum, it's like the more re research you do, the deeper you dive, uh, the more the more fu uh, bullish fundamentals you uncover, the more bullish you come. It's just you become. It's just what happens. So with, with silver, it's an extremely small market. There's only there's less than a billion ounces mined every year. And at $25 an ounce, let's say there's a billion a billion ounces between recycling and mine supply. At $25 an ounce, that's $25 billion. That's nothing in the grand scheme of things when we're talking about globally. That's such a small market. And you've got growing industrial demand for EVs. You've got solar, other industrial applications for silver. But really, the kicker is it going to be when just a small percentage of people in the world say, you know what, I want, I want a tube of silver eagles. Just a little bit. There's just simply not enough at anywhere near today's prices. That that's what's really going to you know flip the lid and 
see the prices really, you know, go through up near $50 and even higher, I think, when just a small percentage of people say, I want some physical silver for investment demand. So you talk a lot about the wealth transfer. Um, what is the wealth transfer? Where are we in that cycle? And how do you how do you prepare for it? Yep, it's it's I love that phrase wealth transfer because it 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 frames this conversation in a more accurate manner, I think. Wealth is really never destroyed, it's only transferred. Rarely is it destroyed, except for in cases of like war and things like that. But like in depressions and recessions, wealth is transferred and you have to know where we're at in the cycle. If we're going into a deflationary recession or even depression, that's where cash gains purchasing power and tangible assets go down. Think um, the Great Depression back in the 30s. You know, it was the Rockefellers and all these guys who had cash and they could scoop up assets at undervalued prices. But in an inflationary depression or recession, you want to own hard assets. And that's where other things fall. Paper assets fall in value relative to hard assets. And wealth is transferred. Purchasing power is transferred to people who have tangible hard assets. And going back millennia, it's silver and gold that are the prime beneficiaries in this exact cycle, this exact environment that we find ourselves right now. There's nothing new under the sun. What's happening right now happens over and over and over again throughout history, even going back millennia. Governments debase the currency and hard assets benefit. It's just what happens. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn $500,000, million, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke and you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where to start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them. And if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange. And one of the biggest are, for example, Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well-established exchanges. But, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof, to the moon, so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.